So we're all together. Everything's gone together pretty sweet as uh, finished up nearly all the cable management. Just going to clip a couple of things down here so they can't rattle around. Um, the back came out pretty nicely and we got everything routed pretty well there. Um, the fan controller and the RGB controller are stacked. We've got our two remotes down here for the um, top fans and front fans. Um, so it's a bit of a pain to have to get to them there, but they worked better that way. And at least we got cohesion um, across it all, but it's all pretty neat. I think everything's pretty tied down. I don't think anything's going to wobble out in transit. So hopefully everything arrived for you when you got it fantastically and it's about to work exactly how we'll show it now so now's the time I guess to show off all the RGB so we'll kick off the lights So on startup until the software takes over the RGB, RAM and graphics card just kind of um, do their default startup thing and then MSI Mystic takes over and kind of matches them up with the rest. Uh, so it's a little bit tricky to change all the colors and everything but it's not too undoable. It just requires three buttons and one piece of software to do them all. So the power supply changes back here. And we can go through different modes and get it to do different things there. And then see if it comes. Top fans that we can change with one remote. Oops. Colors and options. Reading one. Mm. So yeah, now that Windows has started up and Mystic's taken over, those match up and they're controlled in there so they come through. And then we've got the other remote that changes the front. And the cooler so it can do all kinds of crazy things speed and then it goes through its colors and then because it's addressable we can get into rainbows and just different patterns of color patterns. <coughs> and that matches up with the front. So So it came together pretty good. I mean, there's better ways of connecting everything in RGB, but generally when you're dealing with on the sort of mid-range stuff and um, 
unless you go all out and just buy like all the separate fans and a controller and do them all sort of separately. Um, resistor that came with everything. So we can go through. And that one said so that we got the two remotes. There, the top one does the front and the cooler. <coughs> and the bottom one does the top and front. So the addressable fans we put on the front look the coolest. And they're just going to do their thing there. And then everything else goes along. And then Mystic, uh, we can change the graphics card and the RAM to do different things, be synced, dance differently. Um, there's some different modes on each of them that can be set up and do different stuff. So, yeah. All in all, I think that came out pretty sick. So we'll put the case, the panel back on and show you it pretty much ready to go. I'm going to do the last bit of testing and make sure we're happy with everything. They're all neat and tidy at the back, it closes up really easily. And I get it the right way around. Straight in, no resistance. And everything fit really nicely in there. So this case is pretty nice to build in, but no sharp edges. The um, overall, pretty good. Uh, the clip things they have for their fans are terrible, uh, they just need proper screws, they like only work once, uh, and kind of twice if you're lucky, but the little plunger plastic things go through and spread and when you move the fans they're all wobbly and then you want to adjust them, it's a pain in the ass, so that's not great. And these panels don't really clip on that fantastic, fantastically either. Every time I try and get all four corners in, one ends up coming off. Um, and same with that little vent. That one's stuck on the back there. I'm still working out for whatever reason. It's just a pain to sort of get it back in the front there. But I'm sure I'm just being the one that's retarded. So there we go.
Okay, so we've got everything up and running here and we're going to just run a quick benchmark and show some of the, the performance of it. Um, be a better way of capturing this, but I can't be bothered dual wielding the computers at the moment to do it. So we'll just go with this and see what we can get, see what we can show off. So we'll do a heaven benchmark. Dream. You can all look at my absolutely terrible test monitor that looks hard, but it's doing the job. So, running the Test on extreme, we're sitting at 101 frames per second at the moment. And have a look at our temperatures. Where are we running at the moment? 45 degrees. Not that this is really pushing the CPU very much, but we've got 45 degrees. And running at 3.7. Across all the cores. Moving on afterburner. <clears throat> we got 66, 67 degrees on the graphics card, and there's a slight overclock of 160 megahertz on the core clock and 300 megahertz on the memory clock so pushing a little bit extra out of it i think it could go probably higher uh, i tested it and it was pretty stable up probably over to about 220 um but i think 160 is probably about right so it's sitting there and then in heaven we've got 2160 megahertz and 2140 on the memory and so I'm running at 95 frames per second in this part of the test points or so um well, not even, sorry, it was about um, 80 points. Um, so that would, didn't seem worth it for day to day. If um, doing a lot of encoding and if it was like tested a bit longer, stable for encoding, um, it was definitely capable of holding the 3.8 gig um, all core. It, it only went to 65 degrees. Uh, so it was it was smooth temperature wise and it felt really good I'd probably keep it running at that myself but um to ship it out um, I'll, I'll just leave it on auto because for gaming I think that's probably fairly similar the bit more you can squeeze out of these horizons for um, like benchmarking it is fairly minimal compared to the um, actual gaming performance so but there is a little bit more there that can be squeaked out of it and i said the graphics card probably has a little bit more we can that could squeak out of it um to push everything up a little bit more there's enough um uh thermal headroom there to get around it so we're almost would we finish we finished at 2490 
So yeah, 2490 um, is is pretty nice. Actually, yeah, that's right. These were these ones were both before with um, Heaven running. So that's performance of encoding. Um, these earlier ones that were 21, uh, like 2000. Um, so that was performance of Cinebench with um, Heaven benchmarking. So yeah, at, at just the stock run, we're at 2490. Which is pretty nice. So yeah, the the all core um, overclock pushed it to about 27, 28. So it's not a huge increase yet again, but there's a bit more room there, uh, and with a bit more tuning um, of um, all the overclocking, I, I didn't get into full. Um, voltage tuning um, there's probably there's a chance you could get it all the way to 4 gig the, pro, the there's enough um, thermal headroom probably to to try 4 gig um, but anyway it's running smoothly uh, 2490 um, temperatures Uh, maxed out at uh, we're already 57 they're running about 55 through the test so and back straight back down to 40s so cool is running nice um, so that's everything we'll just quickly start up a bit of Skyrim for lols because it's what I've got I do for testing So it kind of looks pretty junky on this crap monitor, but yeah, you can at least see how it runs. It's pretty smooth. If it doesn't crash, because, you know, in Skyrim. And I kind of just left it running. So it may have saved me in some ways to, in, in a weird freeze. No, so we're just in the opening bit. And... I said the monitor's junk and jerky and don't mind that but overall the actual feel is smooth So we'll just kind of run uh, over here. And I don't really care about obviously playing it at the moment. But there we go. We can see it's pretty smooth with effects and everything. Other than the monitor. Being, I've got it kind of, the monitor is kind of overclocked and not running at a, its proper resolution. So don't worry about that. It's just the testing monitor I use over here. But overall we're smooth so that's that I think we're good to go and ship this one out and the owner should have quite a lot of fun playing with it and enjoying it because it was fun to build and the only regret is with the availability of parts at the moment, getting a motherboard capable of doing all the RB, RB uh, doing all the RBG, RGB, yeah, that's the one. 
um, in um, one cohesive set is, is a bit of a shame, but I think this one will be very, very durable and will perform well. And I think it looks great in the setup it is now. And um, it's not too hard to change around everything and get it all it all organized. So I think we'll shut this one down and pack her up and ship her out. So thank you and have a great day.